it. Oh my goodness. What a crew we have today. We may not get out till sometime this afternoon, <laughs> late. <laughs> oh, let's just raise our hands and bless the Lord today. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're a good-looking bunch today. Well, I just don't even know where to start. There's just so much going on here today. You say, what is wrong with you, Pastor? Well, I'm going to tell you, I partied at a wedding last night. <laughs> I think some of you did too. And we want to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Austin Crittenden today. <laughs> Surprised us this morning. But you know what? We said, Krista, you're here at church. That's just what I do. That's just what we do. We're so excited. It was such a blessing. And our special guest today that we have that stayed over with us, Amanda Grace and Chris. <laughs> Gus, Nancy Alcorn with us today. Garland and Beverly Bilbo. Bethany and Josh, hallelujah, our precious, precious family that came in, we're so excited that you're here with us today, and we just thank the Lord for all of his blessings, amen, well who's ready to party with Jesus this morning, amen. Come down with me, love. Your train, train. 
the Spirit of the Lord comes on my heart, I will dance like David. When the Spirit of the Lord comes on my heart, you're here today oh yeah yeah I don't know what we need to do change scenes or something Amen. praise God oh yeah all right look at your neighbor and say well all right
God, no other. Say no other. There's no other God like our God, no other. Say no other, no other God. No other God, come on, shout it out to heaven, but our God, oh, there's no other God like our God, no other, come on, help me now, there's no other God like our God, no other. today there's no other God like our God no other say no other no other come on say no other come on we're gonna shout it out now no other day we invite you into this place Lord to do and say whatever you want to do and say for you are our God and there is no other God we want heaven earth and hell to hear today that you are God you're the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the King of glory and we give you praise and honor and thanksgiving somebody may ask just what you're doing in this sound on the stage today oh we're activating our spirits 
to flow in a righteous way. Come on and praise and sing in other tongues, if you will. For this is the time for you to quit being in the valley and go up over the hill. Yeah, Activate your spirit. Oh, activate your spirit. Help me, Cynthia. Activate your spirit. Oh, activate your spirit. Say, activate your spirit. Activate your spirit. Activate your spirit. Yeah, activate your spirit. Israel, the Most High God, today in this place, we lift our hearts and our hands to you. For the Spirit of the Lord says these things to me, and he says these things on this stage. Woe unto those who would attempt to attack Israel. Woe unto those who would come against my land. Who would come against my land. You have come against my hand when you do these things. For I have told the ocean's tides, don't come any further than this. Back up. For the Lord says these things, I am telling the nations of the world. Back up, back up, and woe be to the Bidons, to the Bidon administration. Do not seek to harm Israel. Do not seek to undermine my nation of Israel. For you have never seen God fight, for God will fight. You have never seen it because my mercy rests over this nation. And my mercy rests over my Israel. But should you attempt to subvert these things and attack Israel, I will be drawn onto the battlefield. And when I'm drawn onto the battlefield, watch the weather. It will go crazy. It will go crazy for they will say, our God is on the scene. Our God is on the battlefield. Our God is here for I can send things and do things to change minds. The Lord says, change yours on purpose, lest it be changed for you, for my purpose. Oh, such words. Yes, such times. Oh, such words. Yes, such wicked leaders around the world. Oh, such words. Yes, and more to come. For the words of God are being raised up in the mouths of children, teenagers, adults, all around the world. For the elderly are prophesying just before they die. They are prophesying and leaving their voices in the wind. They're leaving their voices in the wind. And it will stay here to begin again. For this is the thing that I do, says the Lord. On the great ocean, in the journey of life, it is only meant to be navigated by the prophetic and the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. For I am watching closely, Ukraine. I am watching closely decisions being made. Decisions of neglect and decisions to neglect my people. 
to claim the helping of other people that never see the help. For I am watching this closely, says the Lord. Mark it down. Mark it down. For when the results come public, you will know that I, the Lord, have said these things. You will know. But will you listen? Nay. Nay. For you continue to employ witches and the occult. And you, like Saul, are seeking out indoor witches. You're going to them trying to conjure the dead. Well, there is someone who rose from the dead you need to know. And he is the only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, off we go, lifting our sails high in the wind. Oh, off we go to begin again. I will let you begin again at the beginning and the end. from his answer would have been nay do you know where it's going again nay but that are these are those who are born of the spirit and you can prophesy into that wind and whether you're a prophet that is known or not known you are provoked to prophesy by the Most High. You are prompted to prophesy by the Most High because your voice enters the wind and one after another, after another, after another, after another. And as it moves from the beginning of the wind to the end of the wind, it comes back up the stream again until it's filled with prophetic words and it's filled with sound and it's filled with words that can turn a nation, that can turn a world, that can turn hearts of men, that can turn disaster into good. It can turn everything, says the Lord. So prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Come on, prophesy. Hallelujah. Come on and let's thank our God. 
Come on, we'll thank our God. It'll never again, says the Lord, be church services as usual. For as usual fell into a religious tank. And it fell into a pool that was stagnant. And it could not come to the surface. Nor could it swim out. Never again will it be the same. Never again. Hallelujah. Be ready for different. Be ready for different. Play on the harp. Play on the harp, Dina. On the harp. David coming from En Gedi. Rising from the springs of the wild goats. David coming from En Gedi. Listen to the sounds that he wrote. Writing the songs of strategies. Writing the songs of victories. Writing the songs of prophecy. Of times yet to come. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. to be wrote If there had been a David in En Gedi Masada would have never took place For David searched in the spirit for the victory place Yeah. Can you, can you, can you sing about your victories? Can you sing about your victories yet to come? 
Can you sing about your victory yet to come? Begin to sing in the spirit and the Lord will hear it and give you strategies of war. Begin to sing in the spirit, all of heaven will hear it. You begin to knock on the door of your victory. Oh, of your victories yet to come. Of your victory. Of your victories yet to come. Gino, one or two notes. Give me something. Yeah. Hear it? Come on. Hear it? As it approaches crisis mode. God arose from Teman. And he came to Moses at the Red Sea. And his fiery chariots and horses of fire rode down into the sea. And a blast from his nostrils parted the sea and froze the walls into ice. As you call to me, says the Lord, I will come to you. I will come to you. In a way. In a way. That don't seem nice. Nice, yes, to your enemies. But I am in covenant to protect you. I am in covenant with you to see to you that you have an expected end. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a future and an expected end. Breathe deep of the air of your destiny. Breathe deep in the air of tomorrow. For tomorrow is here. For tomorrow has come. Where are we at? We're in a place in the spirit right now that not many see for long periods of time. We are in a place of the wind, a place of miracles to open the eyes of the blind. We are in a place of answers, a place where 11th hour decisions are made. We are in a place, says the Lord, 
that gives you just a taste of what it will be like when the dead come out of the grave. For I'm stretching forth my finger to touch yours in a covenant relationship that witches cannot understand. So reach up, says the Lord, and reach out and take hold of my mighty hand. And I will pull you up out of the mire where you're stuck and put you on a clean road to run again. This is your day, says the Lord. For what? To begin again. The heart to begin again. The heart hear the wind blows across the black sea. Hear the wind as it blows through Russia. Hear the wind. Colliding with the wall of China. Chipping the Great Wall. Hear the wind. Chinese intercessors on their knees pray. Even now, says the Lord. Hear them in the wind. I am warning every nation, says the Lord God. Keep your hands off of Israel. Keep your hands off of Israel. Last warning. And I'm speaking to the leader of that Muslim nation that you keep talking against them. I have not said the nation because I protected your life, but I have appeared to you twice in the night. And still, you listen to men and not me. Take heed, says the Lord. I will protect you. But the time of your decision is about run its course. Choose wise. For Israel is in my eyes. I light a fire in the Mideast and it runs along the ground to burn already now it's kindled says the Lord and I'm telling you nations to turn leave Abraham alone is his to life. Listen close in the West Bank. 
as you fall on your own life. There are too many souls seeking out witches. There are too many souls seeking out witches. God's coming up out of the ground. See them? Well, they've come to claim their own. The worms are moving. Moving in fear. But knowing when they're finished, their food has arrived here. Too many souls. Too many souls. Too many souls. Seeking out riches. Too many souls. Too many souls.
about that? with all of their might all around the world people using their voices to shout out in the night Jesus is Lord come on Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord yeah a question just to where you are today <laughs> are you excited that he is alive and he's soon gonna be on his way where are you this morning can you shout with all your voice and your might God's gonna talk to your lost loved ones all the way in the middle of the night Jesus is Lord. Come on. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Today. strings of your puppet and begin to expose you for what you have hidden behind the walls for I am coming to you to change your mind and give you one more chance I'm changing things around yeah. this world and I'm going to cause a revival to come forth upon the land and as the wind begins to blow and the storms begin to stir, I will do something within my people that will cause a different storm to take the land. I will cause a different type of flood to come from the north into the south. Yeah. And you will see my hand begin to work 
You will see the miracles that people have talked about. You, have, you will see the understanding of what I'm doing through my word. As you begin to come towards me, I will rest my hand upon you and I will bring those things forward that you have desired for generations. Where are the miracles? Where is the healing? Where is the hand of God moving? I'm saying to you, in short moments, I will come to you in bursts of my spirit and bring things forward that you have dreamed of. I will restore the riches to Zion. I will bring forth those things that you have desired in your belly. It will come forth out of you and through your hands you will begin to move in the ways that I have said that I will move. For the puppeteers, for the puppeteers, I am changing some things rapidly and I am exposing things within the next few months that will be so rapid that people will be in amazement of what I am doing. I will cause things to come forth in such a way that people will say, I've never seen it like that before. I was unaware of those things taking place. Yeah. I am doing something that is deeper than human intelligence. I'm doing something deeper than computer intelligence. For I am doing things in the land. I am doing things in the earth that will change the results of what had been intended. I will bring forth those things that my people have cried for, for generations. I am about to show myself mighty on your behalf. I'm doing things inside the house, doing things inside of your homes that will cause a rejoicing in your neighborhood. For I am coming to your neighborhood soon and I will do things that will astound those that are around you. For I say that others, others have said there are other gods that are more important, that are more intelligent. But I say to you, you haven't seen what I have planned for my church, for my people. I will restore those things that have been removed. I will bring back the altars. There will be a sanctioning that will take place, a restoring that will come forward that will be greater than the reports that you have heard of history past. For I am going to bring the latter rain, and it shall rain and rain and rain and rain and rain, and rain till things are restored the way that I want them to be restored. Let you begin again. You can begin again. Come on, begin again. Say I can. I can begin again. See, wickedness thinks that it can corral everything up. Things that can just corral everything up and surely this is the way it's going to be now. Until a prophet prophesies. Yeah. You make an edit, a written word, and typed if you can get it into a computer program. But you cannot edit what comes out of a prophet's mouth. And even if you take the recording later and edit it, it don't change the fact that it went into the wind when it came out. 
and the streams of life are now being turned. Come on. Say, I can begin again. I can begin again. I can begin again. Today. Today. Come on. I can begin again. you hit that flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say something. He said, I told you so. (laughs) He's talking to everyone listening. I told you so. You thought it was the end, but yet now we're back at the beginning. (laughs) Now we're back at the beginning. He is the beginning and the end. So now we're back at the beginning. You know, I don't know if any of you heard what I said on on Steve Schultz's program the other day and what Austin and I was talking about on the 11th hour before that. It is time to take St. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, and start prophesying, declaring that into the void. Start declaring it into the void. God prophesied light into the void. And the darkness couldn't comprehend it. Couldn't hold it down and seize on it. And now it's time that we prophesy light. We prophesy St. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14 into the void. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend it. Hallelujah. Now prophets not only bring a word from the Lord, but they bring a word for the people to say. So now start saying that. Go back and listen to what Garland prophesied. Say that. Start saying these things. But start prophesying St. John 1, verses 1 through 14. And say it on purpose. I speak this into the void. I speak this into the darkness that's shaping up around the world. And we win. Hallelujah. We win. Come on and give the Lord a shout. It's the time of the open door. Walk on through it. Come on and do it. The open door. Come on, walk on through it. Walk on through it. Come on and do it. It is. It's the time of the open door. It's the time of the open door. Walk on through it. Come on. Come on and do it. Walk on through it. Come on. Walk on through it. Come on and do it. The open door.
before we stop now. Come on. What did you come to see? <laughs> A reed shaking in the wind? No, you come to see the wind shake all the reeds. Hallelujah. You know, there comes a time that door opens, and you better be standing by it, and you better be ready for what's coming through it. Amen. You need to get prepared. Some of your doors are opening today. I never will forget. I tell you what, you get a word from the Lord. You know, the Bible says, believe the prophets and you'll prosper. It says you establish yourself. Thank you, Roxanne. You establish yourself in the Lord. You establish yourself in the word. And when a prophetic word comes forth, and it's a word that you trust, you know it's from God, and you trust who gave it, you hold on to that word. I'm sure my family got so tired of seeing the, the year of the open door written on everything in our house. It is the year of the open door. And I remember Brother Savell saying this in 1819. One of, and I had it written, because I, I, I had a, a, a chalkboard, and I would write down all the prophetic words that was given, oh, the one that was given over this ministry. And then I would give Brother Copeland's, I would write it down. I'd write Brother Jesse's uh, down. I'd write Brother Jerry Savell's down. And that year, Brother Jesse, uh, Jerry's was, it's the year of the open door. And, but he said, it's not going to be the same door. It'll be a new door. And one door. And so I started saying, this is the year of the, I'm not looking at the old doors. Old doors are pretty, but old doors can be deceiving. You can get so caught up in the antiquity of the old door and the sentimental value of an old door that you don't want to change and look at the new door that's coming. But the word says, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing. And so it was a new door. And you had to be looking for it. And you had to be willing to change, to step into that door. And we were sitting in a service. And it was just us. 
It was, it was the time of the, the shutdown. So it's just us. And we're online and we're sitting. And there was a few there, not many, but a few. We have people saying, How, why don't you pan the, the, the uh, congregation and, and let us see the congregation? Because they were wanting to turn you in to see if you were sitting side by side. Well, I, I, you know, we wasn't singing and doing praise and worship with a mask on. There was choir, there was people saying, put a mask on to sing. How you going to sing with a mask on? I, you know what? If my spit gets on you, it's anointed. The devil ain't going to shut me up. I ain't going to put no mask on my face. So we're sitting there. And I'm telling you, and I will tell it like this till the end of the age, and then when we get to heaven, the Lord will show you that it happened. We were sitting there in that little offset. How many remembers the little offset? We were just opening up things so anybody could sit anywhere. And we were sitting over there, and we looked, and the doorknob turned. And I thought one of the grandkids was in there because sometimes they'll sneak, you know, they'd go in there and lay on the couch and, and you wouldn't know who, who was in there. And the doorknob turned and, we, and the door opened and Krista and Amber were sitting there and we were looking to see who was going to come out. You say, well, it could have been the air conditioner, but it never turned the doorknob. And we sat there and looked at it, and when nobody came out, and Robin's door was open, we had adjoining offices, and his door was open, and he was preaching on the clock. He was telling the story about the clock. And when the door opened, and no, and we looked, Krista got up, and she said, I'm going in, and Amber grabbed her by the arm and said, No, don't go in. <laughs> You know, well, you say, well, Krista was brave, and, and we were like, don't go in there. But there was a night, Krista and I was over there one night. This was years ago, and we were in the church, and we were getting ready to leave. We were cutting out all the lights, and the harp began to play. There was nobody in there but, but me and her. And the harp began to play. And we looked at each other, and you thought we would have said, Oh, the angels of the Lord are here. <laughs> and we would have fell down. We went, Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Out the front door as fast as we could go. And then we got to wondering, wonder what would have saw if we'd have stuck around. But after that, when we got home that night, Crystal looked at me and she said, Mom, your door opened. And I was like, I know it. I know it. <laughs> I know it. And she said, Mom, your door opened. I said, I know it. <laughs> she said, Mom, your door opened. I said, I know it, Krista. <laughs> she said, it was the open door. Ding, 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 ding. I said, it was my open door. She said, and it was your door that opened. And I just symbolically just stepped on through it. You have to make a move. You have to make a move when your door opens. You say, what has this got to do with the offering? Everything. Everything. Because if you don't move when your door opens, then everything that God has intended in your destiny, your prosperity, your uh, protection, everything, your correction, your direction, everything 
It has to do with that open door. So you want to be standing in front of the right door when it opens. Because he's not going to open a door for you that's going to bring you harm. He's not going to open a door for you that's going to bring disaster through that door. That door is to bless you and to give you an expected end. And so I, I said when we did that song, I think that's my, when the Lord wrote that song, uh, I said that is my favorite song, the time of the open door. Because you just got to walk on through it. Just come on and do it. There's an open door. And today, I declare, I, I just feel it in my spirit. Some of you, during worship today, that door was just right there in front of you. And that doorknob just turned. It just turned. And your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive it. I receive it. Bless the Lord. Amen. So today when you're sowing your seed, you know, the enemy has, has tried to just cause the body of Christ to shrink back from talking about prosperity, from talking about sowing and reaping. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's the worst thing you can do is to give in to his lies to the enemy's lies, to his, his tactics that he tries to get you to fall into. Oh, don't talk about prosperity. You know, I want to, I went in this uh, little shop the other day and, and uh, they were talking and I knew they'd heard all this kind of garbage talk and everything, but you know, I just held my head up, walked on in and uh, they they, she, they were just really kind, and, and we were talking, and she said, you know, I saw something the other day, and of course, you know, I braced up about, okay, here it goes. You know, I didn't know if I needed to go into my kung fu stance or my <laughs> taibo or just kind of just stay there real cool, you know, and take what was fixing to come. And, and she said, I saw somebody posted a uh, picture of you the other day with this belt on. Wasn't this belt? It was another belt. And said, look at her wearing that $500 belt. I said, whoa, whoa. I ain't never paid $500 for a belt in my life. And I got some pretty sharp belts, but they ain't never paid no 500 bucks for them. And she said, and I thought, now that's a lie. Because she said, I sold her that belt, and that ain't a real, that ain't, that's a knockoff. <laughs> I said, well, did you post that, that, that was, she said, no, I, I didn't, I thought. <laughs> but I looked at her, I said, well, you know what? I said, goes to show you one thing. I said, you sell some good, good knockoffs, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she started laughing. And then she said this, she said, but I, I thought, well, what if she had have paid $500 for that belt? What business is it of anybody else's if she, if she did pay that for a belt? And I thought, you know, people don't, they won't speak up about, they'll say, oh, well, you shouldn't have. But God wants his people to have the best. He don't want you to have a knockoff. If a knockoff is what you want, that's fine. But what if he don't want you to have that? The choice is yours. And it shouldn't be anybody else's business about it. Because the enemy will get you to thinking that, oh, I can't have that. That's too expensive. And that becomes a barrier. And it becomes a limiter. And it becomes a ceiling. You know, they talk about the debt ceiling. When the enemy gets you to thinking that there's not enough, 
then you, you get a ceiling as how far you can go. In your, your thinking, in your finances, he'll say, oh, you can't go past that barrier. Oh, you can't do that. That, that, that will never happen. You might can make this much money, but you'll never be able to make that much money. That's a limit. Take the limits off. You serve a limitless God. You take the limits off. He didn't put a limit on you. The enemy puts limits. You believe for the land of more than enough. The enemy will let you, he'll let you stay in the land of not enough until you die. But you know what? You got to be, you got to be like those lepers. Why sit here till we die? There's been a camp over there that's been spoiled. And we got to get up and go over there. Because that's a land of more than enough. He'll even let you stay. He'll let you get out of the land of not enough and get you over into the land of just enough. And that's miserable. The land of just enough is miserable because you can't, it's your, you're hemmed in. You can't go to the right. You can't go to the left. You can't step back. You step, can't step forth. I feel like I'm doing the cha-cha slide this morning again. You can't go, you can't go anywhere because you are in the land of just enough. There's just enough for food. There's just enough for bills. There's just enough for clothes. There's just enough for this. There's just enough for that. And the whole time, the Lord's bidding you to come into the land of more than enough. More than enough. More than enough to meet your need. More than enough to bless your family. More than enough to take care of, of, of everything that you need to take care of. More than enough for your ministries. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. There's more than enough. And so when she told me that the other day, I got to thinking. I thought, you know... Since when did we care if God's people wore a $500 belt? When people that are in Hollywood or wherever, movie stars we call them, or, or, or singers or, you know, whoever, they can sport a purse that costs twenty thousand dollars now you probably will see me with a knockoff purse i'm just gonna tell you i just don't know if i no i i'm kidding you but that's where we bump up against things they're not ashamed of that they'll just walk around with however much money their clothes cost it, it don't matter to them they're not ashamed about it. And it's time the body of Christ gets out of shame. He said, for your shame, I'll give you double. Double for your trouble. So today, you need to claim that. We let him slide way too much. Way too much. It, the word says, when the thief is caught, you make him pay sevenfold. We'll just forget about that. Oh, well, the thief was caught. That was the devil. He did that. No, you make him pay. You make him pay. I remember telling my dad about that. I said, you know what I found in the scripture? And I was telling him about that. And he sat there and he, you know, he, he would study things, you know. He'd sit there and ponder things. And he sat there for a little bit. And I said, you know, Dad, I said, you've had a lot stolen from you. He just shook his head, fixed his glasses, got a spit cup, spit in it. <laughs> he said, yep. He said, he's about to pay. And then he added this. He said, and I'm tagging on interest. I'm tagging on interest. 
And I watched that man take hold of that. And in his early 70s, he got back one of the most lucrative trucking businesses you've ever saw. And he made the enemy pay back what he had stolen. He saw an open door. Yes, he was on disability. Got up one morning. He said, I'm tired of this medicine. He said, I've had enough of it. He said, I've laid on this couch enough. He was taking it. Now, he had had heart attacks. He said, I took this medicine enough. He said, I'm tired of it. And it makes me depressed. He went in. He threw it in the garbage. He said, I'm coming off a of disability, and I'm going back to work. <laughs> and, he, and he did. And started driving a truck again. He saw his open door. And the Lord had spoke to him, and the enemy had stolen enough. He, see, he was not, it was, wasn't just his finances. He was, he was stealing his health. He was stealing his mental uh, stability. And he wasn't like that. And he said, enough's enough. The thief's caught. Because if you could show it to him in the Word, he would get, he, that's exactly right. He got a revelation of it. So today... Has the enemy stolen anything from you? Then take it back. Take it back. Just don't take that thing back. Take it back sevenfold. Do research. If it was 10 years ago, see what inflation tagged on to it, and it's worth this much now, take it back. Take it back. Can you just take it back? Take it back from it. You know, we used to in the 90s, we sung that, I went to the enemy's camp. And everybody just jumped around and I took back what he stole from me. Woo, that felt good. But did they go and do it? you got to put feet to your words. Faith without corresponding action is dead. So we've got to we got to correspond. We've got to let the enemy know we mean business. And we're not going to be just run over any longer. We're a force to be reckoned with. But they're all the Gideons, it seems like, have run and they're threshing wheat in the wine press. Well, it's time they come out and show the enemy who they are. And if it's a remnant, then bless God, it's just a remnant. But it's a remnant that can rip him up. Amen. Amen. So today, when you're sowing your seed, I want you to go ahead and start declaring. You say, well, I got a list a mile long. Well, write it down. Write it down and begin to declare what he has stolen from you and take it back today sevenfold amen amen hallelujah and we use the word he cannot stand the written word but it is written in luke 6 and 38 as we give it is given unto me Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto my bosom. For with the same measure that I meet with all, it shall be measured to me again. Do you believe that? I believe it. And now for the tithers. Hallelujah. Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Do you believe that? I believe it and I receive it. 
in Jesus name amen hallelujah the ushers will serve the people today man you are in for a treat today we have a general with us that's going to bring the word how many's ever listened to miss ginger ziggler well if you haven't those of you that have you know how powerful she is those of you who haven't just hang on because this lady has got revelation from the word of god we are so honored to have her here with us today we love her she is such a part of this family and this ministry and we're honored to have her here and we want you to give a good a god bless to miss ginger ziegler this morning as she comes and brings the word amen our little texan Thank you so much. I'm very, very honored to be here. And uh, <clears throat> I have a word from the word. <laughs> Is that going to work? <laughs> uh, but I have a word for this church and for the pastor and the prophet here. And uh, y'all turn over. I I'm from Texas. Can you tell? The other half of me is from Georgia. <laughs> so I uh, turn over to um, Acts 18. And this is in the Amplified. I, I'm a minister of the Amplified, so prophet and pastor, this is going to be a blessing to y'all. And when y'all get to it, if you don't have it, can they put it on the screen? The old Amplified Bible, Acts 18, verse 9 and uh, 10. And I want y'all to stand up with me. What we're going to do is we're going to prophesy. How many of y'all got the Holy Spirit? All right, okay. <laughs> So you are prophetic because you got the Holy Spirit. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is prophetic. And so what we want to do is prophesy to them and to y'all and all of y'all here in this church. And after we prophesy, then I got something else for y'all to do because I want you to be involved in what I'm doing. So you ready? Everybody found it? Did, did they get it up on the screen? There it is. No, y'all have to put it in the old Amplified, the classic Amplified Bible. We'll all be sounding like we're talking in tongues. We don't do the same one. <laughs> Which that works. <clears throat> Did you get it yet? Well. Thank you, honey. Do y'all have it? <laughs> I sprung it on them. Okay. All right, well, <clears throat> if you don't have the old Amplified Bible, then look, look on somebody else's. And because uh, what we want to do is we want to prophesy this. And uh, because prophetic words come to pass because they have power in them. So we're going to start with verse 9. We're going to prophesy it to the prophet and to the pastor. <laughs> and then we're going to prophesy it to this church, which means it's going to be to all y'all. And this is going to happen. This is just the beginning. I have another prophecy after this. But I like a more sure word of prophecy. That's what Peter said. He said, I was up there, and I saw Jesus transformed, and all these wonderful things happened, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. So I like to prophesy God. It's like he is actually talking. Isn't that cool? Y'all? Yes. <laughs> all right. Here we go. So, Well, I guess they didn't get it, so here we go. All right. Ready? One, two, three. And one night, the Lord said to prophet and pastor, got that? Here we go again. And one night, the Lord said to prophet and pastor, and to all of y'all now, wait just a second, say to all of us here in this church. All of us here in this church. All right. Now, the Lord, we're talking about Jesus. He said that to y'all, and he's saying that to the prophet and the pastor. Have no fear. Have no fear. I have no fear. And I mean for you to say it like you mean it. <laughs> Don't mumble. Tell me. I have no fear. Come on, say it. I have no fear. 
All right, so you got to say it like you mean it. And you got to mean it. And if you don't mean it, keep saying it, and you will mean it. Because when I get through talking to you about the blood, you're going to be so you ain't scared of nothing, okay? All right. <laughs> but speak. Say that. But speak. You're in Warrior, Alabama. Right. Okay. We're going to speak. And we're going to say what Jesus Christ is telling us to say. I have no fear. I have no fear. I have no fear. Because the Lord said. Because the Lord said. Because the Lord said. You start talking like that. And you might not be very big around or tall or up or down or whatever, but you're going to be big on the inside. All right, here you go. And I will not keep silent. I will not keep silent. Y'all are not talking loud enough. I will not keep silent. If y'all started talking like this, y'all could take this town in about two hours. <laughs> okay. All right, verse 10. I bet y'all never heard the classic amplified in Texan, have you? <laughs> I think he made a Bible just for me. <laughs> for I am with you. Now, we're going to say it like this. For Jesus is with me. For Jesus is with me. And let's say this, Jesus is with this church. For Jesus is with this church. Jesus is with our prophet and our pastor. Jesus is with our prophet and our pastor. Say it again. Jesus is with our prophet and our pastor. You're not saying it from your feet up. Come on. Say it again. Jesus is with our prophet and our pastor. Put your foot in motion and say it again. You know, if you don't want to be moved when you're being pushed, you have to plant your feet. All right? So then, all right. No man. No man. No man. No man. Doesn't matter what shape, form, or fashion. Doesn't matter what shape, form, or fashion. Tall or short. Tall or short. Political or non political. Political or non political. No man. No man. No business people. No business people. No anybody. No anybody. Of any kind of other church. Any kind of other church. Nobody. 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 And that includes Satan himself. That includes Satan himself. That includes Satan himself. Will assault you or harm you? Will assault you or harm you? Will assault us? Will assault us? Or harm us? Or harm us? They can't do it. They can't touch our pastor. They can't touch this church. They can't touch our prophet. They cannot do it. They cannot do it. They will not do it. They will not do it. They will not do it. Now, I love this. Jesus said to Paul, he said, y'all don't worry about nothing because I have many people in this city. Now, before you say that, listen to me. Many people in this city of warrior. You hearing me? Yeah. Many people. Many people. And you know, it's just really interesting. God turned the whole world upside down with 120. I know this town's little, but y'all got 120, I'm sure of it. There's probably 400 of you in here right now. So when God is for you, Nobody can be against you. I don't care who they are. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. Jesus himself said, I, you know, y'all ain't taking my life from me. I'm giving it up. I'm going to do it because that's what I'm supposed to do. Paul said, you guys are not going to tell me what time of day it is. I'm going to die when I'm ready to die, and I'm going to live when I, yeah, I don't care. I'm in a prison. 
in Rome, but you guys are not calling the shots in my life. Yeah. Now, are y'all really like that? Or are you whiny babies? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hey, it is not time for Sunday school. Yeah. It isn't. Now, we don't have to be mean, and you can tell I'm not very big, but boy, my yes is yes, and my no is no. And I'm nice when I say it, and I giggle when I beat the fire out of you. And you do too. So what we're saying is we have many people in this city who is for us, who is with us. They love us. We are highly favored. They cannot do enough for us. They're behind us. They're blessing us. You got it? We have many people in this city, in this state. We have many people. Our pastor has many people. Our prophet has many people in this city. In this church, we have a thousand in this church. We have a thousand in this church. We have a thousand in this church. Now y'all turn around and start prophesying to all these seats to be filled up right now today. Faith is now. Turn around, and start prophesying. Call them in. All those people in this city. Call them in. All the people in this city. Call them in. Call them in, all these people in this city. Now somebody shout unto God like you mean it. Praise God. I have one more thing to say. Y'all don't know how to take me, do you? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Some of you know me. <laughs> I have one more thing to say before they started prophesying, before prophets started prophesying. I was just sitting there and I said, Lord, what do, y'all, you, know, what do you want to say? And he just kept saying the same thing. And I, now, don't get your religious ears on. Come on, be open. <laughs> like cornbread and beans and you know, black-eyed peas. It's really okay. Just be yourself. I'm, a, I'm going to be myself, okay? <laughs> y'all can tell that, can you? <laughs> okay. But he said to me, he said, I know that they'll say, I've already heard that before, just like she said about the open door. But God said, today marks the change in this church. Today. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Today, come on, sit with me. Today marks the change in this church. Today, we're taking territory. Today marks the change. The change. The change in this church. And see, you're not going to just say it now. You're going to say it when you get behind the steering wheel and you drive away from here. You're going to say it when you get out there and get a hamburger. You're going to say it when you're in the shower. You're going to say it when you're on your way to work. You're going to say it when you wake up in the middle of the night. You have to agree with what he's saying, and you do it by yakking, by talking. Y'all going to talk anyway, so you might as well say the right thing. I mean, the devil's talking. You know what he is? He's the prince of the power of the air. And he's been talking over this particular state and over this particular church and over this particular situation in this city. But God's been talking too. I brought it with me, Ruth Heflin Ward. I think it was in 1996. I gave it to pastoring them a few times ago when I came over here. Chris, my Krista, I got a Krista too. We got a Krista Bullock and I got a Krista. Oh, wonder. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong name. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> but my Krista back in Texas. 
she found it when I came over here and, and uh, Ruth Heflin Ward had the opportunity. She laid hands on us one time and uh, we, we knew her a little bit back in the, I call it the Ice Age, y'all. Y'all can tell how old I am back in the Ice Age. But anyway, but she said that, that Alabama was going to be one of these leading places in this move of God. So that means y'all have a responsibility. These two people are not the only people that are responsible. Y'all got to do something. I don't want y'all just coming to church on Sunday morning and sitting, you know, where on your rear end and not doing anything else. I want you to get out there and do something. And everywhere you go, say, I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored. They just love me, they just love me, they love me. And so she said there's going to, it's going to be a major, major key in this outpouring of God. And then Chuck Pierce, it was, I don't know, a year or two years ago, he said that Alabama was going to be the leading state in this move of God. Y'all are in a good place. And see, he, Chuck Pierce also said about Texas, he said that we're like going to be the prophetic voice. He said, we've been praying that in every time it acts like the other prophetic voice. You know, the demons are blabbing. And so every time it sounds like that, we all, all, of, our, all of us get together and go, no, dude, that ain't, that's not how it's going to be. We're going to be the prophetic word of God in our state. And so what do you need to start saying? Because I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm just saying hello to y'all. I'm not preaching yet. I got to tell you my main message, but I want you to be prepared for it because you are responsible to help. And you're responsible to be part of this. And you're going to be so glad. I am so blessed. I've been part of three revivals, and this will be my fourth one. Isn't that amazing? Three major revivals. This will be my fourth one. And so I am so excited. God let me, I'm 79, almost 80. And God has let me live this long. I'm going to get to be part of this fourth revival. Isn't that amazing? So y'all don't want to miss this. It's going to be that Wigglesworth thing where... You know, all the hospitals are emptied and everybody's prophesying and everybody's raising the dead. Everybody's getting saved. And we're going to get to do it. And it's not about the person behind the pulpit when he prophesied. He says, it's going to be all y'all. Everybody. And so you, you don't want to miss this one, okay? Because I don't know for sure if we're going to have any more. But you don't want to miss this one just in case it is the last one. So let's say it again. We have much people in this city. city. Today is the change. change. The change. change. The change. change. Now, God didn't tell me what the change was. Now, y'all going to find that out. And you guys are going to get to be part of it. But what if, you know, what if y'all just get ready to go somewhere and have a hamburger this afternoon and just raise the dead on the way or something? You know what I'm saying? Just go like one of y'all's stores and somebody's in a wheelchair and say, hi, can I pray for you? Boom, all of a sudden, they're healed. Or all of a sudden, you're just somewhere and you just have a vision and God shows you something. Now, the next thing you know, you're owning a business. Come on, be awake, y'all. God's doing the supernatural, and you want to be part of it. I don't know about y'all, but when you get my age, you don't want to talk about the natural. (laughs) I need supernatural moments, supernatural hours, and supernatural days every day. And so do you. And so what we want to do is we want to think supernatural. Wherever we are, we're looking for somebody to help supernaturally and be a part of it. And that's what you start doing here. And don't let stuff, yucky stuff, come out of your mouth. I don't care what they say about you. Just say, I just think you just love me. I heard Jerry Savelle say this one time. I think it was him. No, it was um, who it was. One of those preachers. Anyway, I listened to all of them. Anyhow, he was... He said that this lady came up to him, this little lady came up, and was just saying, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. And so he just kept walking and kept walking, and so she just kept on saying, I don't like what you preach, I don't like you. And he turned around, he said, you know what, if you, if you knew me, you would just love me. 
That was the answer. So that's what you're going to do when you hear this negative sound. If you knew me, you would just love me because you're what, pulling in that supernatural favor. And if they cuss you out when they turn and walk, just say, bless you. I love you. I'm going to be praying for you tonight and do it. Because favor from God begins to draw people to you. And the next thing you know, they're going to find out, hey, she really does love me. And she really means what she says. She really is going to go home and pray. And I really am going to change. Hey, something my good might happen to me. And that's how you start getting people to where they want to hear the word of God. We don't have to say mean stuff. I don't care if they do. I had a lady stop. I don't drive so good sometimes, and anyway, I was in somebody else's lane or some little minor detail. <laughs> I was trying to go left, and I think, whatever. But anyhow, so this lady gets out of her truck. She got all the way out of her truck, and so I rolled my window down, and I said, ha! Because <laughs> I knew. And she just started cussing, 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 and so I was just like, I was just sitting in the car, and I was just doing this, and I said, you know what? I am really sorry. I said, I wasn't paying attention. I was listening to somebody teach, Greflo Dollar and Kenneth Copeland and all them, and I was praying in tongues, and I wasn't really paying attention, and this lady's cussing the whole time. And she just, in my door, and she said, I'm just going to jerk you out of there, and I'm going to do this and that, and I said, well, before you jerk me out of here, you better know I'm going to lay hands on you and cast that devil out of you. Because, ma'am, I'm not scared of you. What I was trying to say to you was, I'm really sorry I messed up. I had my head somewhere else, like in the spiritual zone, and wasn't here in the natural zone. See, you, and the next thing you know, this lady just, she just starts back, and I said, wait a minute, I need to tell you about Jesus. Don't go away yet. And we had cars blocked everywhere. And then I looked up, and I thought, come to yourself. Come back into the natural. The police going to be here in a minute. You know, but the next, and that lady stopped cussing, and she got in the car. See, you can just keep on being nice. You can just keep on being nice. And I thought, then she pulled, and, you know, she was doing her thing and stuff. And so I did. I just pulled over the side of the road, and I just sat on, and I cried, and I prayed, and interceded. I said, Lord, I don't know what's mad with that lady. I don't know what happened to her before she got here. I don't know how she's been hurt or what. And see, God give you compassion. And I don't know what happened to her. Thank God I've never seen her since. But I don't think I ever went right when I was supposed to go left or anyway. But you understand what I'm saying? When they start coming against you, you just start giggling. That's grace. Okay? In case you didn't know that. And you just start ministering to them, and they'll start listening. And we're going to win this city. And they're going to love us. And they're going to think this church is the best thing that ever happened. You understand? And they're going to come and they're going to say, y'all need this or y'all need that. We're going to help you do it. See, that's how. This is what's going to happen. That's part of the change. You're going to see favor. You're going to see favor. You're going to see favor. In this church right here. Because y'all are very, very important. You have a prophet in this state. We got to have that prophet. We've got to have those words. And so what we want to do is we just want those words to keep going. So, again, we believe today. We believe today. We receive today. We receive change. The change. Father God. Father God. That you are talking about. That you are talking about. We believe. That we have supernatural favor with everybody in this city and in this state and all the way to the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. And that's how you start talking. All right, y'all can be seated. Now I'm going to tell you my message. Did y'all like that? Did that help you? Yeah. You just got to think straight. So what God told me today is um, that he wanted you all to understand a little bit more about the blood of Jesus. And I know that they teach you about that all the time. And I think some of you just got my book. And uh, 
but I'm learning more. I've been learning. I, I don't even remember exactly how long, maybe since the 70s. Again, I dated myself. Can you believe that? But anyway, <laughs> but I've been learning about the blood of Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus. But what he's saying, part of what he's saying in motion today is the blood and the glory of God. So I want to share with you, uh, you turn over at Hebrews 12. And that's where we're going to start. I'm going to start with the blood. And Hebrews 12 and uh, verse 24. And uh, we're going to talk how about the power of the blood of Jesus, how you cooperate with the blood of Jesus. Then we're going to have a move of God. We're going to have some more prophecies. We're going to have some laying on of hands and things. And uh, because you all got to get in this this flow that he's doing. All right, Hebrews 12 and verse 24 and 25. And again, it's the classified, amplified. And to Jesus, the mediator, the go-between agent in the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of blood, which speaks mercy. The blood of Jesus speaks mercy, does not speak vengeance, speaks mercy. A better better, the, uh, the uh, King James says a better uh, message, a better and more gracious, that's the grace of God, message than the blood of Abel, which cried out for vengeance. Verse 25, this is very important. Are y'all listening? Tell me you're listening. Y'all got to talk to me, okay? All right. <laughs> All right. See to it that you do not reject him meaning what he has to say, or refuse to listen to and heed him who is speaking to you now. What happens to us, we get in our religious mindsets, and we say, well, I've already heard that. Well, you haven't heard it yet. Not from me and not from maybe God, because as we grow, we, we mature. We can read the same scripture. You know, I've been reading the Bible since I learned to read in first grade. And I read it and I think, good night, when they stick that in there. <laughs> I don't remember ever seeing that before. And uh, so we, we progressively, but what has happened, I want to tell you prophetically where we are, and you already know how serious things are in our nation, how serious things are in the world. The blood of Jesus, you must learn about the blood of Jesus and do not refuse it. And don't say, well, I learned that when I was in the Baptist church, and I did learn a lot about it in the Baptist church. But that's not what we're learning today. Yes. Jesus, the mediator. Mediate. We, we got we to gotta mediate some stuff that's going on. And, but the blood of Jesus speaks mercy. Yes. Satan right now. He can't access the blood of Jesus, never has been able to access. So what is he doing? He's trying to get blood from every different direction, and you, you just fill in the blank. You already know what I didn't say. All right? So, but we have a, a power, a weapon. In fact, we have the weapon. This is what God told me when he told me to write this. This, this comes back from 1988, and I wrote the book in 91. And he said... At the end time, it's going to get so rough that you're going to have to understand the power in the blood, the power in the blood, Revelation 12, 11, that that is the power to overcome Satan himself. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying the rest of the Bible isn't important, and I'm not saying praying in tongues is not important. I'm just telling you what is important right now today. Because we have to have the ability to overcome Satan himself. And I could tell you stories that will curl your hair, honey, and you wouldn't even need a curling iron. I mean, I, have to, I had to confront the ancient of times, Satan himself, one time back in 1995. And I didn't even know what to say. I mean, how would y'all like that? try that one on for size? I was praying for the nation. Boom, all of a sudden I was in this place. And I was like, hello, everybody. <laughs> Jesus, you're here, right? <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Anyway, so you get in these places, and sometimes you just think you know the Bible, right? I know that word, <laughs> you know. But you, you get a myriad of demons and Satan himself. I've had to face Satan two times. Satan, not a demon. Satan. I face plenty of demons too, but Satan. And so you just think, well, I just know. And I tell you about this one time. It sounds funny now. It wasn't funny at the time. 
it was 3.15 in the morning, and this demon showed up, and I knew who it was, and I'd slept 15 minutes. I don't sleep a whole lot, and I'd slept 15 minutes, and all of a sudden this dude shows up. And so I went, da 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 this is back in the 70s. I was learning about the blood. And so here I go, da 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 <laughs> you know. I know how to do this. In the name of Jesus, I command you. And the dude just said, oh, yeah, not today, honey. And I was like, whoa, that didn't work. <laughs> and then I said, I said, what did I do wrong? Jesus, what is going on? And I got back up, and I just said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, and I command you. And that thing just stood there, looked at me, squared his shoulders, and I thought, I must not be saying something right. <laughs> My mind was still working. So anyway, I said, Lord, tell me, what, what am I doing wrong? Do I not have faith? Have I messed up or what? But he was teaching me about the power of the blood. So I just stood there and I squared off with him, and he was maybe four or five feet from me. I wasn't scared. I just didn't know what to do. And so in my feet, this power came up. And I didn't know what was happening. I was just standing there and we were staring at each other. And this power came up. And when it got, it came out my mouth. And the power came out my mouth. And I just said, the blood. And that thing did that. And I thought, wow, that worked. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'm going to do it again. So I got really strong. <laughs> you know, I finally found the key. And so I said, the blood. I did not say the blood of Jesus. So this thing, all of a sudden, it backed up, and I thought, I'm winning. <laughs> Aren't you glad? We, you know, you face me. Come on, y'all. Don't be spiritual on me. If you haven't had this happen to you, I hope it never happens, but I'm telling you what to do if it does happen. <laughs> okay. So I, I just, I didn't yell. I didn't raise my voice. I was about as loud as I am right now. And I said, the blood. And all of a sudden, that thing started backing up. Well, I got really brave then. da 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 Here you come. So I said, the blood. And I just said, just kept saying the blood. And I backed that thing. I have discerning of spirit so I could see just plain like I can see y'all. I backed that thing out of the house, out of the yard, and I drew the bloodline around the yard, and I said, get out of here. And then I said, Jesus, what happened? Like, how come I was saying in the name of Jesus, and that didn't work? And he said, well, I'm teaching you about the power of the blood. And that was a long time ago. And then in 91, when I was in Cape Town, South Africa, the Lord said, I want you to go back to the nation, your own nation. <clears throat> and I said, well, I don't really like preaching. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't really like preaching in America. <laughs> I like it in foreign countries, and I did. I love the foreign countries. And then he said, no. He said, you don't know what your nation's about to go through. And he gave me a vision, and he showed me everything that I'm seeing right now. And this, is, this was his words. He said, when you're an old woman, I think I'll qualify. <laughs> he said, when you're an old woman, you're going to see this, 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 and this, and this. And he said, when you get to be real old, and I thought, what is real old? <laughs> My kids weren't even married then. You know, I'm like, I'm not thinking I'm old. <laughs> and so I said, okay. And he said, you're going to see all these things. What I want you to do is start praying and learn about the power of the blood of Jesus because that's what that generation is going to have to have to be able to defeat Satan himself. Not just demons, but Satan himself. And I'm not trying to scare you all. I'm trying to make you grow up. It's... I'm serious, it's not Sunday school anymore. And we're just entering into the battle. But I always say this, it's a fixed fight. So we're going to win. You read the end, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to win. You just got to make sure you believe that. And so he began to teach me about the power of the blood. And so this was one of the first scriptures that he gave me was in Hebrews here. He said, do not refuse him who speaks. And he said he doesn't speak vengeance like, like Abel's blood did. He speaks mercy. And I said, mercy, don't we want to beat some of those people up? <laughs> oh, y'all are just being holier than thou. <laughs> I'm going to get to the glory part. Oh, glory. You know, but I'm not there yet. 
I'm in the punching part. <laughs> okay. So you've got to learn. This is the words that he gave me. He said, learn to speak the language of the blood. And it's a different language. Like I was telling you about that demon, I was saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the, <laughs> I was saying everything I could think of. All scriptures, you know, I know two or three scriptures, and I, the scriptures are running through, but it wasn't working. I had to understand the power of the blood. You have to understand the power of the blood speaks mercy. I wasn't speaking mercy about that demon. For that, I was speaking mercy for myself because I was being attacked by a demon, a real one. You know, not the boogeyman kind, but the real one, you know, straight to your face. And so what we've got to in this day, if we intend, if you intend on winning battles in your family, battles with your physical body, battles with your businesses, your ministries, or whatever, you're going to have to learn to speak the language of the blood. The language of the blood is mercy. Mercy carries with it justice. Justice is different from judgment, and I'm sure they've taught you on that. And so we've got to understand we have got to bring forth justice today. And justice is going to be, it's coming. And we want to make sure we're on the right side of the tracks when justice comes. We want to be on God's side. I mean, Ananias and Fire showed up at church, and they lied. We're going to, did you know Ananias and Sapphira's lie will show up next Sunday, y'all? And we're going to have, and we're going to go, whoa, what happened? Justice. Start lying to the Holy Ghost, you're going to get in trouble. Don't do that. <laughs> I told you I, I do spankings, but I help you giggle when I beat you. <laughs> but justice is coming, not only to our nation. Now, we're focused on our nation. I'm focused on the nation. Yes. I've had, I, did, I haven't ever kept up with it. I, I know Jesus has tens of thousands of prayer meetings. I've had 24-hour prayers, seven-day prayer, eight-day prayers, eight-hour prayers, 12-day prayers, 21-day prayers. I don't know, just, you call it prayer, and I figured out how to do it. <laughs> so I did all these different kinds of prayers for our nation. And the assignment was <clears throat> to hold back the sun and the moon. So a couple of months ago, the Lord came to me, and he said, well, your assignment's changing now. And I said, what am I doing now? And he said, I want you to get back time. I said, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I never went to Bible school. I started a bunch of them, but I never actually got to go. And I said, I'm not like maybe I don't know how to do that. And he said, we'll start with Hezekiah. And I said, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going out there with the sundial. And I actually know uh, the Navy man that did the uh, sundial up in uh, uh, up the Naval Academy. And uh, anyway, so I got all of his stuff and figured out how he did all that. And I was trying to figure it out in Hezekiah. And I said, what are we doing? And he said, Daniel 7, 25. Yeah. I want you to learn how to get back time. Yes. Wow. And, and I said, well, help me understand that from the word. And he said, Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> I said, oh, yes, sir. So he said, restore. He said, every time you see the word restore, yes. it has to do with time. Yes. Now, why? Because he told me, he said, I let you confront, or I had you confront, the Ancient of Times. But when that thing, him, Satan, I was in front of him, I was thinking, man, I know the Ancient of Days, and I know he's above you, and so I don't know exactly what you're doing. This is 95. I was just learning some of this stuff. But I said, why do we have to get time back? I don't understand that. And so I just recently heard you preach on this. In fact, I prayed out a bunch of stuff that you preached. I said, tell him I've been praying that <laughs> for him to preach that <laughs> and prophesy. But anyway, we've got to get it back. Now, if you're going to deal with some local demon, <laughs> okay, 
we're talking about low level devils and then the medium, you know, all that. You know, Ephesians 6, you got it. Right. But we're going to talk about we've got to restore time not only in your life. And you can see in my life, you can physically see God is restoring time in my life. Yeah. Yeah. He is. I take care of cows. I got 22 acres and I just built a house myself with a hammer, okay? Yeah. On an eight foot ladder. 106 degrees, okay? So he's restoring time. Plus, I do the ministry. So we got, what are we getting back time for? Because we have to get back what Satan has stolen in our nation. Now, the big reason is God wants our nation, we know that, to stay free because we affect the whole world. So the who and the what, y'all got it? Read them between the lines. The who and the what and all that, they want to come and they want to what take all the nations and be this and that and the other. But God told me in 91, Joshua said, stand still. He got less than 24 hours and it's on record that there's 24 hours somewhere, you know. But now God is saying, Hezekiah, let's go back and get 15 years. How are we going to do that? So with my group and I started praying on that to try to pray it back, get time back. And so he started giving me scriptures. He said, what about, say, no more, there's four months to harvest. Don't say that. In fact, we prayed that in Pastor Coon and he just preached it too. He prophesied it just two Sundays ago. Somebody texted me and said, hey, did you hear what he said? I said, no, what did he say? And he said just what we've been praying for him to say. But then he said, I want you to get back 24 hours. And I said, okay. I don't understand what I'm doing, but I'm going to follow your instructions. So the, the prophet Elisha said, don't say like they've all sh- closed in and everything, get ins there, and they're all dying. They're eating their babies crazy. Hello? Modern day, got it? Okay. So he comes along and he says, by this time tomorrow, So he said, I want you guys to start praying, decreeing, and prophesying by this time tomorrow. Do you know who in Washington, D.C. is? Bye-bye. You understand what I'm saying? And you don't have to be religious. And you don't even have to know the whole Bible. Just thank God. At least get two or three scriptures, y'all. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Read it. (laughs) Read it for yourself. And he said, you start getting back, and you start taking back time. He said, I did it all through the Bible. He said, do you know what a miracle is? And I said, you know, when he asked you something, I know nothing. (laughs) No, sir, I don't know. (laughs) Just always say that when you're talking to him. I said, no, sir, I don't really understand what a miracle is. He, He said, it's time. Boom. He said, a broken arm could heal in six weeks, but if I, if I do a miracle, boom, heals in six seconds. And I said, well, why is time so important? He said, Daniel 7, 25, I showed you in 1995, you're fighting the ancient of times. Because, this is heavy. Is this all right, y'all? I got, I got pages of scriptures but I haven't gotten to glory yet. Can y'all hang in here with me? Okay. So where we are is the Antichrist spirit is total deception himself. And what he wants to do is he wants to speed up time and control time. Daniel 7, 25. He thinks. Did you ever read that scripture? In the Amplified it says, he thinks to change the time. I thought, well, I'm going to tell him how to think different. No, you're not changing time. I'm going to change time. God said I could do it. I'm learning how to do it. I'm practicing. I'm going to practice on you. Okay? Now, this is serious, but it's funny. You ought to follow me around some of these crazy places. I end up in the spirit realm. Like when I was talking to that lady, thinking I was going left and I was going right. Anyway, so the, the ancient of times... 
He wants to set up the tribulation. He wants to get us to the end of time because he wants to head to Israel and he wants to get in the temple so he can offer up a pig. Got it? All right. This is war, y'all. Do you know the name of your city is War? Your? You know, I live in Fort Worth. Got it? Fort Worth. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is built on a what? From the Second War, where all the airplanes and everything. I was born during the Second War. I'm a war child. But then so are y'all. That's why I said it's not Sunday school. He's raising up people that are strong enough and tough enough and not whiny babies. Now, we're always going to have whiny babies. I don't know what to do with them. I don't, I don't take care of the nursery anymore. <laughs> I've been delivered. We pastored churches. I've had to play the piano, vacuum the floors, clean the toilet, and hold the babies and preach at the same time. Literally had babies in carriers here because I was helping somebody while I'm trying to preach and give them a bottle. So I'm practiced. Okay. I don't have to do that anymore. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore. But anyway, we are training up people. And I'm about training up people. And you say, well, what about those people that are not, you know, where they need to be and they're not strong enough? Well, we're going to get them strong. And you guys go out there and get them strong. If they can't figure out if they're a girl or a guy or whatever, or kitty cat or whatever, we're going to help them figure that out. You understand? Because they're just mixed up. And you know why they're mixed up? Because you and me and the church didn't do our job. And it started at the pulpit. Because we had Sunday school instead of church. But now it's changed. It's changed. And when I see babies now, and I look at the parents and I think, if I have anything to do with you, you're going to be tougher than shoe leather, honey. <laughs> because you've got to fight for those babies. Because in 91, what the Lord told me, when you get to be an old woman, you, your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren are going to need this. And he said, I know you will not want to leave the face of this earth until you know your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren are taken care of. And don't you know, when I hold my great-grandchildren in my arms, I'm thinking when I won't be here to pray for them. And I want to make sure that mama and that daddy can help them. Because it's not going to be, it's going to be, it's not going to be, just you, you know, I know everybody wants to celebrate. Well, y'all did a few minutes ago, and we are going to celebrate. But we're going to have to get tough enough to be able to celebrate. We can have our and our time. We can have time. But I'm telling you, the devil is trying to speed up when he goes, and everybody falls down and worships him. And I'm going to be mean to you. You ready? Y'all ready for Ben? <laughs> Stop letting everything control you. You don't let your sleep control you. You don't let your food control you. You understand? You don't let your stinking attitude control you. You don't let your lack of education control you or your PhD degrees control you. I don't care if you have two, dim, two dimes to rub together. You don't let that control you. If you've got two million, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Oh, and like we got to be this way, and they said that, and uh-uh. Just like that lady I told you about, she wasn't going to control me. I don't care if she was threatening to beat the stuff inside of me. I thought, lady, you don't even know the dynamite that's inside this woman. <laughs> you ain't going to do nothing because you're not going to control me. Your cousin's not going to control me. Your attitude's not going to control me. Because Satan is all about control. <clears throat> all the viruses and all that stuff and all that stuff they're putting in shots. And I'm going to 
can I do this? I'm gonna fuss on you one more time. Stop running to the doctor every time you don't feel good. They're gonna give you a shot someday you don't want. Learn to believe the word of God and stand on your feet. If you're eating stuff that makes you sick, then behave yourself. Stop doing it. That's simple. Stop. I'm just telling you the day is coming. Stop. Get to the place where, well, you just don't know about my husband. Oh, I was married 50 years. Tell me about husbands, okay? (laughs) And in ministry for 43 years. You just don't know about my wife. You just don't know about my kids. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with you. No finger pointing over here, no blaming over here. So coming back to the power of the blood, you begin to understand that the blood of Jesus is speaking mercy, but that mercy gives you strength on the inside. So when you're faced with something, you're able to stand. And you're able to get enough sense in your head wisdom to know what to do to deal with that situation because now situations are getting worse but you still have enough you know the power of the blood it will defeat satan every single time time. he doesn't know that (laughs) he doesn't know it but you've got to know it and when you know the power of his blood Don't refuse him that speaks. But he speaks mercy. He doesn't speak vengeance. And I'm telling you, sometimes when I'm praying, I want to beat the living daylights out of people in prayer. Now, don't do that sanctimonious stuff. I know y'all are like that. But when you start praying, you go, Lord, help me to pray mercy. Because mercy can bring justice. And people, there's two kinds of people, I think. One that's teachable, they're going to learn, and one that's hard-headed, they're going to learn the other way. Proverbs says there's three kinds of people. Fools, you can beat the living daylights out of them, they're never going to learn a blooming thing. They're going to still be a fool when it's all said and done. Ignorant people just don't know what time of day. They don't know if it's Monday or Wednesday, but you can help them. They can learn. And then there's wise people that just get wiser. Which group you want to be in? (laughs) Yeah, okay. So you're going to be dealing with those three kinds of people. But the thing is, the power of the blood of Jesus, if you're not allowing people in situations to control you, Satan will come to the day to where he'll go like, well, I guess we tried that and it didn't work. We tried this and it didn't work. And how is he going to know what to try when you open your big mouth and let him know what time of day it is in your life? Right. Right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn to speak the blood. Say, I, I know the language, I know the language of, the of the blood. I know how to talk the language of the blood. And I know the blood of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. overcomes, overcomes. Satan, himself. Satan himself every time. Every time. And you've got to get that, Revelation 12:11. Now, I don't have time to teach on Revelation 12, 10, but he's the accuser of the brethren. So that's where you get down in the dumps, and that's where you get the pulp beat out of you is because you're listening to his accusations. Now, when Pastor was receiving the offering, I do want to tell you one, one more story. I want to tell you a good story. This is a, <laughs> this a good story. 1981, John had just, John, my husband that's with Jesus. I can't believe he went off and left me. <laughs> But anyway, so I'm doing his part and my part. But anyhow, uh, he was getting ready to graduate from Bible school. I didn't get to go to Bible school. I got to work three jobs. <laughs> but anyway, he made it. So he was making it. We were trying to figure out what we were going to do. And um, now, whiny baby, okay. Now, we're talking about a long time ago, 1981. And so I was sitting out in front of this. I only had $6 to uh, buy groceries for four people for a week. And when I'm saying we had no groceries, I'm not exaggerating. We didn't have closets for We didn't have anything. So anyway, I was crying like, and I was working for the Bible school. I was crying, 
and the car was running, and I was worried about the extra gas I was using, the air conditioner was on, and I was whining, crying, and instantaneously, Jesus took me up, and I went up into the heavenlies. The heavenlies where Satan is, not heaven where God is. The heavenlies where Satan is. And I was up there, and I looked up, and there was Jesus, and above him, way above him was his throne, and he was standing up. And I felt like a little girl. Every time I see Jesus, I always feel like a little girl. And I was just standing there just staring at him, eyeball to eyeball. And over here was Satan, right here. And he w I could see him. In the spirit realm, you can see everywhere. You can see up and down and all around. I don't know how to explain it, but you can see all the places at the same time. And so I saw him over here, and he was, <laughs> and I didn't even know the scripture like that. And so I just stood there, and I thought, man, as long as I keep my eyes on Jesus, I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm a little girl. I'm dumb. I know nothing. I just want to watch what he's going to do. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. And Jesus said, now, we had, I had like less than $6 to buy groceries. I had a bent can company was where I was. I was going to go buy bent cans to try to you know, throughout the week. With rice, it's amazing how you can go a long time without eating, <laughs> you know? And so, anyway, so instantly, Jesus pointed his finger at Satan himself, Satan himself, and he said, stop it, it's enough. And he was gone, and then Jesus told me, he looked at me, and he told me some stuff, and then he said, uh, some things to me about money and stuff like that. Instantly, I was back in the car, and I thought, oh, my God, my, I'm out of my lunch hour. I'm going to have to hurry. And so when I went back to work that day, Joanne was sitting there. And so she said, Ginger, come here. i got something to tell you. And I said, what? And she said, I, I fasted for you on my lunch hour. She told me word for word what Jesus had just told me in this vision. Now, I had less than $6. This is a true story. You can verify it with two or three or 500 people. I don't lie and I don't exaggerate. Okay? I don't. So, anyway, one of the things he told me that the money issue, and it, we didn't have a money issue because we weren't working. Let me tell you the schedule. John went to school from 8 a.m. to noon, and he ran the camera to get the tuition free. He went home and he slept till 5 o'clock. I worked from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock. When he got, that was one job. <laughs> when he got off, uh, when I got off, then from 6 to 10, we worked at doing construction, because I can do all kinds of constructions. Can he? We worked at a hotel. Doing all, we laid carpet, we painted, we put windows in, we did all kinds of stuff. And then he went we got off at 10, and he went back to work. He laid down and slept and went back to work at 12. So we're not talking about two lazy people that was living off the government. We were working. And we still didn't have, but we had bills. Our house in, in Houston didn't sell. I'll just tell you a whole story. I just want y'all to feel so sorry for me. No. <laughs> I don't need sorrow. Uh, but anyway... The engine, the head gasket and engine in the car uh, broke. We had oil in the water and all that stuff. So me and John had to physically, physically, the two of us, got it. You men know what I'm talking about. We had to put that head, take that head off. So we had car troubles. We had a truck that had 113,000 miles on it with no air conditioning. We had to push start it. <laughs> okay, you got it. So we were, in a, and then we had all of our bills still in Houston. We, because we were never late on payment. We we're honest people. We said we'll pay you, we'll pay you. So we had all that. So the reason we were working all these jobs is because we had all these bills. So in two weeks, two weeks from that, the grand piano I had worked as a maid to earn this grand piano. And the grand piano sold. I tripled my money on the grand piano. Our house we were trying to sell sold. We made a profit on it. We had taken some of that money and loaned it to somebody to help them because they were losing the house. <laughs> and so when they paid us back, they paid us back a whole bunch of extra money, which we didn't, we didn't even charge them interest. Money started coming in from everywhere in two weeks. 
So I've got less than six dollars. I have a meeting with Jesus. Jesus gets mad at Satan. Hello? And all of a sudden, I got $10,000 in the bank, and that is a true story. It was our money. And this is the rest of the true story. We took that $10,000. We worked for Pastor Bob Nichols, Calvary Cathedral, to start his Bible school. We took that $10,000 and started his Bible school and paid ourselves back over a period of time, over two years when we got the tuition in. That's what happened when Jesus said, come up here, i got something to talk to you about. When he says that to me, I say, yes, sir, I'll be right there. <laughs> I am on my way right now. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> and then I'm there. But that's what happens when Jesus, when I was learning about the power of the blood, he rebuked Satan. And he's been rebuked ever since. Debt free, I've been debt free, two houses and everything else. Because Jesus, you understand what I'm saying? I don't care how mean Satan is to you. In two weeks, everything could change. But his blood is speaking what mercy. Because part of what he told me that day was he was having mercy on me. And I was like, well, I, don't, I didn't feel like I needed mercy, but I guess I did because I was, I was going on three hours of sleep. I weighed 95 pounds. I weighed less than I do now. And uh, we were just working all the time. But he just stepped in our life because his blood speaks mercy. Now, did we go through trial? Yes, we did. Two years worth of hard, hard trial, sleeping on the floor and everything else. But Jesus has mercy, his blood. Don't refuse him who speaks mercy. So we come back over here and here's Satan. He wants to mess up time so he can go get his blood sacrifice, which includes he wants all of our blood is what he wants. So he can what move up because he, he's totally deceived, but he actually believes he's going to win. He does. And he is going to have a people who worship him. That's the seriousness of the time we're in. But I'm also telling you, when you stay with Jesus and you understand the power of the blood, and all you can say, if you can't say anything else, you can just sit there and just stand there and go, the blood, the blood, the blood. You might not even know the power that's in it. Satan does. And he knows you're talking about Jesus Christ's blood. And the reason that blood has that kind of power is because Mary was a virgin. The seed that she received, which comes back to, you know, Adam and Eve and all that, the seed that she received was the seed, the eternal life of God Almighty. Satan can never usurp authority over God Almighty. Almighty God, he can't. That blood is eternal life. He cannot usurp authority over eternal life. So I don't care how bad, because I I go places and people go, well, you've never had it bad in your life. (laughs) You ought to hear the rest of my stories. (laughs) I mean, the rest, some of them are really tough. I've told you the nice ones today. So, but you know what I'm saying? No, it's learning how to hear and how to stand in the day of adversity. It's learning that he is with you, he is not against you, that you've got supernatural favor working in your behalf. And no matter how tough it seems, in the end, you are actually going to win this whole thing. And in the end, it's going to turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to you. Don't you know that I I can actually believe God for money now? (laughs) Oh, yo, come on. I mean, people say they can, but I I actually can. I mean, now I might have to work hard. But I can still, you know what I'm saying? And so you get, you get something good out of all those trials. So now, the reason I had to, I'm t- my main message is about the glory. <laughs> Isn't this exciting? <laughs> I haven't even gotten there yet. So my main message is the glory. The, the blood of Jesus has to precede the glory of God. And there is a difference between the presence of God and the glory of God. This morning with the music, we experienced the presence of God. 
but we didn't quite experience the glory of God. When the glory of God comes in manifestation, the Red Sea actually opens. You understand what I'm saying? And then people who are sick just instantly get healed. I mean, things just, there is, his, his power is displayed. And when his power is displayed, then you are what? Receiving from almighty God, all the universes and everything that he's done. You're receiving that. And as you're receiving that power, that power starts working in your body. That power starts working in your mind. You start thinking different. Your physical body starts getting healed. You don't even know you got healed. You don't even know. And like I said, like my situation with the money, and two weeks later, everything had changed. And it changed from that day to this. It was May 21, 1981, and my whole life is completely different. Completely. That one day, boom, his power manifested. And so the glory of God is coming. Like I said, Ananias and Sapphira, I mean, you know, like we're going to get on one side or the other. Because when the glory of God manifests, and it's important for all of us to realize we have a part in the manifestation of the glory of God. It has to do with environment. Now, here we can get another little spanking. Here we go. If you do, come on, let's be real people. If you do pornography, you're in the presence of Satan. You're going to get his glory. Just say, oh me, God, forgive me, help me, Jesus. <laughs> you know, somebody do something. All right, so if we're in the presence of God and he is good, and he's good all the time. What are we going to get the manifestation of? The goodness of God. What would have happened to me if I hadn't believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living? But we have an environment. And so the glory of God will start manifesting. First, you're going to feel the presence like we did this morning. And you have goosebumps and hair stands on end and everything. But then if we can stay, if we can get an environment where he can work, we don't have trash on the TV, and we don't have stupid stuff in the house, and we're not saying dumb stuff. We can have a place where his presence, we start, then the next thing you know, his presence is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You got glory on the inside of you. Why is it not manifesting? Why is it not manifesting? It's in there. We've got to have the right environment. So what I'm doing today, what I was sent to do, is come here to announce to you the glory of God is coming to this place in manifestation. It's coming. I can hardly wait till I see the days of holiness. What is that? I've been before the throne of God in heaven. I've seen Jesus face to face. There's, you're, you're marked forever. You're forever changed. The word says that every eye will see the glory of God in manifestation. But here we've got to what? We've got to have an environment of the presence where you, you, know, you have the goosebumps and you just, oh, well, yeah, he's here. <laughs> He's here, he's here, he's here. Don't wiggle, don't say nothing, don't do anything dumb. Don't think anything stupid. Just don't say anything dumb, just blah, you know. Because then all of a sudden the glory of God is going to start. And as the glory of God starts, we won't even have to say, does anybody in here need to be healed? We're going to hear somebody go, over there because I got healed. So your responsibility is to have the right environment. I guarantee you, when I came in here, I had the right environment. All I've done is pray and study. I did eat a little while while I was here, which I don't eat a whole lot. A lot of times, Tracy cooks so good. Oh, my gosh, she fixed me corn on the cob. Ooh, and I had watermelon. <laughs> I don't normally eat that much. But, I, I, but the rest of the time, I was studying and praying. 
because I wanted the environment, my environment. So when I went somewhere and I was in somebody else's presence, they knew something was happening. So if I could release the glory of God, then it could touch that person. It could help that person. It could reach out to that person. And so you all, with the glory of God, it is going to come in manifestation. And it's not screaming and hollering. It's not jumping up and down. And it's not even beating at the time of the drum. I'm telling you, when the glory of God starts to manifest, you're going to be flat on your face. And you're going to be scared to speak a word. You're going to literally be trembling. Uh, the last church I had, my church in Bedford, I got ready to preach one morning. And uh, I was just waiting for them to get through the praise and worship. And I just, I didn't even know God was going to come to church that morning. <laughs> you know, you just have church you didn't know. And so I walked up. And when I did behind the pulpit, I, I was, oh, my God, he's here. And I, I thought, he really, and I was scared to turn around and look because I wasn't for sure who all was going to be there and angels and everything. And I just said, the only thing I said, the whole church is a couple hundred people, and they'll tell you. I just said, he's here. I never said another word. I didn't move. Let me tell you what happened. Men in the church kicked off their shoes came screaming to the front. I never said a word, laying down, Jesus, Jesus. We had an eagle's nest where we had all of our sound equipment. Uh, James and all of them, they come running down the, the stairs, and they were running. Everybody was running, all the whole people behind me, the singers, and they were falling on their face. And I was like, golly, Molly, what do I do, Jesus? I, I thought, man, I'm saying nothing. I'm not going to help God. <laughs> I, whoa. And I looked at some of those people because I'd been counseling them, and I thought, mm, okay, we're talking about like real repentance, okay? <laughs> and all I said was, he's here. I felt his presence. Yeah. Then his glory manifested. The whole church was on their face. People fell out of their chairs, and I was like, whoa, you got yourself a handful here, Jesus. But I wasn't going to help him. I didn't say nothing. I just held on to the pulpit because I thought, I think he's going to take me to heaven again. But <laughs> I was selfish. I said, if I go this time, I'm not coming back, Jesus. And he said, William, you're not coming up here today. I said, <laughs> rats. <laughs> but see, you don't have to do anything when the glory of God is in manifestation. You know, this is going to happen in this church. And when it does, it spreads out the door because it's not about this church. It's about y'all being out there and bringing them yes, yes. into here. Yes. And when you allow Christ, the anointed one, in you, the hope of glory manifests the presence of God. The presence of God. Now, if the musicians would come, the presence of God. Pastor or prophet, do y'all have anything to prophesy or say? I don't want to be out of place. I don't want to overstep my boundary. We're just going to be, what I want you to do is just think about it. Just say, thank you, Lord, for the blood. Just begin, and don't, don't try to impress anybody. You're not going to impress me. I don't care, and you're not going to impress God, except your purity on the inside. You really want to move a God in this church? Do you really want to see a thousand people? Do you really want to win this whole city? Do you really want to make a difference in this state? Do you really want to make a difference in this nation? We got to stop playing church. It's all about his presence. And you've got that. You already have the glory in you. So as we begin to worship, if y'all will come up and help me, y'all come up and help me. Amanda, if you want to come up and help, anybody wants to come up and help, y'all just come on up and help me. And what we're going to do is we're going to get to the place to where the presence of God is just, you allow the presence of God. Now, here he comes. I can feel him right now. He's coming. He's already starting. I can feel his presence in my physical body right now. 
Now we're going to let, you're going to learn how to cooperate with him to where the glory starts to manifest. So help me with this. If you got any words or anything you want to say, you want anything to sing or share, just let the glory of God. I want, stop looking at me, y'all. Close your eyes. I want you to see Jesus. Just see Jesus. Think about what he did for you. Think about what he did on the cross. Think about what if he walked up to your face right now and just kissed your cheeks because he loves you. Think about his goodness. Think about his mercy. Just think about how he loves you. He cares about you. Think about how he wants to tell you something about your tomorrow. He wants to minister life to you. He wants you to be well. He wants you to hear his voice. He, he literally wants to hug you in his arms. He just wants to come to you in a very special way. You're going to be changed today, and as you're changed, then so you can touch other people. The glory of the Lord is in this place. Can you see it? The glory of the Lord is in this place. Just minister to him. Thank him. Worship him. power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of Almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus' name. In order to see that breakthrough, you have to completely turn and walk away from everything that was binding you, and I mean everything. Everything the enemy attempted to use, everything he attempted to chain you with, every voice in your life that attempted to control you, and yes, I'm talking about family as well. And that I understand well. Everything, full repentance is completely turning, completely turning. And walking towards Jesus, pressing towards the mark of the high calling and never going back. Never going back to the wilderness, never wandering in circles. It's breaking the cycle. The enemy loves cycles. He loves them. They're his go-to. He works in them. He thrives in them. Don't let him keep you in a cycle. Don't give him that satisfaction. He's a fallen host. He's a defeated foe. Don't give it to him. Break that cycle today with the Lord. Break it. Because he wants to do an incredible work in your lives and in this city and break that generational bondage that has been here. That the enemy thinks he has a legal right to do it. And the enemy is going to be on put on notice over the next year that that right is broken and over in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is applied. It is going to be applied. And that legal right that he thinks he has, the Lord is going to deny it, take it, rip it up, and pour out his glory on this city. Pour it out. You're going to see people come to this city you never thought would ever come. 
because of the glory that's going to rest here. I'm in New York. I'm in a tough territory. I understand this. New York is a tough territory, if you can't tell by my accent. I am from New York, born and bred from the city. There is an oppressive spirit that rests over New York, and I feel it every time I go back. I can feel it the second I enter the airspace of New York. I feel it. But this is why the Lord has his position where he has his position. To stand against the enemy, to prophesy, to stand on the solid rock of Jesus Christ, yeah. and to speak forth the word of the Lord and utilize what happened at the cross, the blood that was shed, that dripped onto the mercy seat, that denied the enemy the right to our lives. The believer's authority. We need it now more than ever, the believer's authority. You have to operate in it. You have to know it. You have to walk in it. And you have to not be afraid when the enemy comes to resist and to challenge and to say, no, Satan, this is not yours to take. It's not. He tried to take my whole life. He tried to take my husband's life. And it was the mercy of God that preserved us and that brought justice and that broke his assignment that he had against us because he wished a long time ago he had gotten rid of me because once I opened my mouth, that was it. And I will spend the rest of my life doing that because I love the Lord. I love him. He is my father. My father went home in 2019 and he accepted the Lord three weeks before he died. Wow. And I'd been praying since I was six for him. The Lord is my father. He is the best father I could ever ask for. And you have to make him your father. No more of that space between you and God. That relationship has to mend in order for the fullness of his plan and what you were created to do on this earth to be fully walked out. You know... You know, there's, there's glory like hanging in the room right now. I, that's what I, I told Ginger. I said, can you see that right there? I don't know, but you can from right here. Oh, my goodness. And that's, you no, know, it's, but, but this is what I heard. You know, the Lord wants to make warriors today. That's what I heard. And if you're really going to do something in the Spirit, you really need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, you just really do. You know, have you ever noticed that we don't have one recorded miracle until the Holy Ghost des descended on Jesus at the Jordan? And, and this is what I saw. Now, now, I'm going to ask you to do something different. Why? I don't know. The Lord just says things to me sometimes about how to do something. There's a lot of what we would call, what you would see as almost like Shekinah in the air. And if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but you want to be, let me see your hand right now back. I see a hand, 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 hands. This is what I saw. I saw people coming down this aisle. They walked right in front of the stage with their hands in the air, praising God and began to speak in tongues before they could get to the other end of the, the altar. Because there's that kind of manifestation up here right now. And if that's you, Ushers, uh, security, whoever, help me out here. And let's just, if you want to come, some of you say, well, you know, I've never spoken in tongues in a long, long time. It's not just about making the sounds. 
It's about releasing what's inside of you. The Holy Ghost comes up on you, up on you. And if you want to walk in the Spirit, that's how you, you really need that. And I believe it's going to equip us for these end times more than ever. Now, if Jesus needed to be baptized in the Holy Ghost before he did one miracle, surely you and I do before we go any farther. Hallelujah. So if you want that and you, I just want you to start making your way down this aisle. And then we're going to just, and when you come through, just take your time. But when you go through, then go back to your seat. And just go back to your seat speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I think this is the next move to make today. So when you come right here, Eugene, just go ahead and sing, play. And when you start walking through here, just lift your hands and praise the Lord. Yeah, just and I'm and just take your time. Now don't run through. And I'm going to say, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Come on and help me. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's it. Now release that on the inside of you and begin to do it. See, he ran right into the Holy Ghost right there. Look at the glory. Look at it now. Look at that. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. 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 That's it. Now turn it loose. Begin to speak in those sounds. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't, don't, don't. Just go ahead. Receive you, the Holy Ghost. That's it. El prato crece arriba. O carata crece le pristele. Indubrado coroso ratele. Aro. Come on. Receive you, the Holy Ghost. E cura prato cara saprino. E roba jengre si ala rende. Look at that, look at that, look at what, look at that power. Receiving the Holy Ghost. That's it, that's it. Somebody in this room, you've been a denominational person that don't believe in speaking in other tongues. The Lord wants you to come and walk through here right now. Come on, do you have the nerve to do that? Come on. Come on, and just... Walk right through, walk right through, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And pray in tongues all the way back to your seat, all the way back to your seat. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, how many of you God wants to raise up real intercessors. And when I talk about real intercessors, I'm talking about people who live prayer. You don't live to pray, you live prayer. You just live prayer. You just pray all the time. <laughs> you just find yourself speaking in tongues in the grocery store. You know, just pray, you just pray and pray. And I call him, and I know Kenneth Hagin said there, Jesus is the only intercessor. But, you know, I asked the Lord one time, I said, Lord, it seems like all I do is just get in the closet and pray. And you know what he said to me? He said, that's all I do. <laughs> and I, he said, that's the only ministry I have. He said, isn't that good enough for you? And I said, wow. yes, sir. That'll work. That'll work. He said, I pray continually, but I pray for you to hear my prayer and you to pray what I'm praying. And then I hear what you're praying, and then I live to pray to tell the Father what you just said. That changed me because I literally live in the prayer closet. I started when I was about three years old. I live prayer. I am in prayer. I just, I'm, I'm all about prayer. 
And it just seemed like I wasn't doing anything but praying. I said, well, what about teaching and preaching and all that stuff? He said, that's all I do. So I'm looking for, and y'all forgive, if you don't like my terminology, just ignore it and put your own word in there. If you want to call a cow a calf, it's fine. Okay, so what I want is who really wants intercession? The kind where the Holy Spirit, you moved by the Holy Spirit to pray. And when you're moved by the Holy Spirit to pray, those prayers are answered, I guarantee you. They're not because you know the Bible and you know the right scripture to pray. It comes from your inner being. It comes from who you are. It comes up out of the inside of you. Now, those that want that kind of intercession, I would like for y'all to come up here because we have to have that in this church. And you, let me tell you, you need to be willing to pay the price. That means you're not going to eat a bunch of times and that means you're not going to sleep. God told me before I came today, he said, there's going to be a church full of intercessors for y'all. Because I remember when I came a few months ago about the prayer. And you, you have to be taught how to pray. You have to know how to pray. And let me tell you, praying is not being stupid and goofy and acting like an idiot. I'm sorry, I only have a few more minutes. I gotta go catch a plane, but I'm gonna tell you what time of day it is. Praying, it's just who you are. You just move with such compassion. And you don't have to jerk or shake or you don't have to do none of that stuff. I mean, you might, but you don't have to. You know, when I hold my grandchildren, I sometimes I don't do anything but just kiss her face. But love is just, I'm holding them. And it's not what I said, it's how I feel. That's what prayer is. So there's going to come an anointing on a bunch of y'all. And I need all y'all to help me. There's going to be a, an anointing come. Now, because I have to teach you some more stuff on it so you learn how to do it. You pray a whole lot in tongues and not much in English. But God will give you understanding. He'll help you understand. You might not understand when you're praying right then. You'll understand later. The other thing is you have to learn to keep your mouth shut. God will tell you secrets, but he only tells secrets to people who shut up. I know secrets from 50 years ago I've never shared with a human being. Nobody knows what I know. Because God, you didn't tell me to tell anybody. He told me, I want you to pray. And then later on, I hear somebody talk, and they'll say, and I just like, I just kind of giggle inside myself. I thought, boy, I call it God Boaz now that John went on to be with the Lord. I go, Boaz, me and you really pulled that one off. Because <laughs> I get tickled. Because they didn't know. They didn't even know I was praying for them. And so you learn to keep a secret. You keep a diary and dot and write out notes because you'll forget what you prayed about. And you have to learn to laugh because intercession is hard. It's so hard, and you'll get down under the weight of it. And you got to have people around you. People around me, they'll say, Ginger, shut up, go to sleep and eat. I don't want to hear another word out of you. Go take care of the cows or mow the grass or do something. Because you're just like, oh, the whole world's on me. Oh, Jesus, God, we're all going to hell in a handbasket. No, no, that's not how it's going to be. Because you just get a weight on you. So there has to be a, a time that you just, just like, all right, Lord, I prayed. I don't know what else to do. Could you ask somebody else to pray? And then she's setting up prayer and you you guys learn to pray together whatever how she's going to set it up and but I'm telling you Jesus came praying he's still praying you can't do anything greater than what he's doing and your prayers are so needed you you will be amazed 
and how people change if you never say anything but you say it to Jesus. And you go, well, I don't see any change. Well, it might take 20 years, but you'll see it. It might take 20 minutes. But this is one of the greatest honors, after what Jesus told me, that you could ever have is to pray. Take your Bible, put it in your lap, and I do this a lot. I just read chapter after chapter, and I pray in tongues. I pray in tongues same time I'm reading the Bible because, you know, your brain is one thing and your tongues is another. And then I asked the Lord, I said, uh, he told me one day, he said, well, whose prayer do you think I'm going to answer first? Yours or the Holy Ghost? I said, not a problem. <laughs> I'm not dumb, okay? Even if I'm praying the word, I might be praying the wrong word with the wrong motive. Do something with my husband. I've got the scripture I'm going to use on him. Oh, yeah, the God's going to use something on you, too. So there. So pray in tongues. You pray right. You'll always win when you're praying in tongues. You pray in tongues all the time. Kenneth Hagin says tongues is the doorway into the supernatural. People ask me, they say, how do you live in that supernatural? I'm trying to learn how to live out here. But I learned to live in the supernatural in 71 when I heard Kenneth Hagin say, Tongues is the doorway. And I go, yes, sir. Pray in tongues more than I pray in English, more than I talk in English. So you learn those things. Those are basic things about prayer. And you have to understand the Bible. And don't be telling somebody, well, I heard from God and this is what God said. Wait, it'll be confirmed. If you really heard from God, he, he's... God knows you prayed, and he knows you've got to have confirmation. In the mouth of every two or three witnesses, is going to be established. It's going to be established. And, well, you know what God told me about da-da-da-da. That's pride, and you're going to get a spanking. That's not going to work. Humility works. Some, well, God told me so-and-so, so and so and I just, and maybe I already prayed it out, and I just go, wow, that's interesting. I never even told him I prayed it. Because I don't want to get in pride. Pride comes before the fall. And you can go through hell and back and have humility and God will bring you right back. You get into pride and you might stay over there in hell for a while before you get back. So those are things you learn. Those are basic things in prayer. So there's an anointing. There's an anointing going to come on y'all. We need you. We need this state. And we need this city. War. You're, and you're not warned in tongues. You're praying in tongues. Yeah. You're, and I, this goes against your theology. It's too bad. I'm not going to move. I'm set. <laughs> I know what I believe. I've been doing this a long time. You're just praying in tongues. You're, and when whatever the tongues comes out, just let it come out. And just like sometimes it's quiet and sometimes you're yelling. I mean, sometimes my prayer group on Sunday night, golly, it's a good thing I live out on property because y'all can hear us next door, you know. And then sometimes you can't even hear us. We're so quiet. So it's not loud or quiet. It's what God is doing on the inside. So I, that's a fast lesson. It'll take me about three years to teach on prayer, but you just got a quick lesson. So, But what's going to happen is if you will receive it, now it's up to you. It's being offered because he did. He saw the, the glory of God over there and the glory of God over here. And it's manifesting. And you start praying. Set aside time to pray. Don't get too busy to pray. Get too busy to do everything else but not to pray. And it's going to develop and develop and develop and develop. And then God will start showing you things, and the next thing you know, things will start manifesting. They manifest out of prayer. So we're going to pray. If y'all have anything y'all want to say or do, I'm like, am I okay? Am I out there? <laughs> I can get out there, y'all. You have to reel me back in. But I can get out there because that's where you need to live. You need to live in the supernatural, the presence of God, because the glory of God started to manifest today. You don't want to shortcut it. You want to let him manifest. You want to let him manifest. So, Lord, we just pray right now. 
Just tell the Lord how you feel about it. Tell him you want to receive. Lisha arosa le mekando. Lekia mano dolaba. And an increase, an increase, an increase in anointing. An increase. Just receive it. An increase. And an increase in understanding. Help me pray it out, y'all. An increase in understanding what you're praying. You pray with your spirit. You pray with your understanding. Koma, koma, kale, chisa, lubroma, kaurosa, loraba, lorba, roba, kasola, yerinda, yerima, don't stand under la roba, dos kirida, lora mahai. Lord, we ask you to come. Come in power and demonstration right now. Osha and all of y'all out there, start praying. Come on. Le shiele kando. Le kiaka. No le bitiana. Come on, pray. Get it with it. Distale. Doma. Don la manina. Desto. Brasso. Yakato. Lisoma. Desime. Tuse. Yarakaba. Yarakaba. Yara bakatasso. Laura, yield, sir. Yield. 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 Lo sheha. Eso. Yield to the power of God. Bring that flesh under subjection. Le shiando. La kando. La kando la bakai. Lo libetia ma no kaba. No kamaninda so. Le kia. Kado. Kando study. No tiama. Toma. Increase. Increase. Increase in visions. Increase in real visions, visions, real visions. Le shiatamo, knowledge. You're going to receive the, a knowledge that you haven't had before. Knowledge that you haven't had before. Le sha, la rokore baka. That prophetic gifting is going to increase in you in Jesus' name. Le shiaha, le shiaboka. Lo ba denga. Non de le kan, do le kema. Lady Minima Kurobaka, Lo Shiri Kaba, Bo Kaba, Kabro Soli Minina Mando, La Mando, Grabber, Grabber, Kabo Sola Bache, De She, Hele, Oba, Come here, Davis, Come here, De Shiri Kaba. Minister to him. My cassette I mean, I'll go down. Just stay on the platform. Okay. Call him up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
want some more? Come up, please. step back and let the others come up.
us and we push back the forces of darkness. We thank you, God, that you have anointed us for such a time as this to take the territory. Oh, God, we thank you. And we're here to take over. We are here to take it all. Yes. For such a time as this. For such a time as this, Lord. Yeah, yeah, We exalt you. We adore you. There is none like you, God. Oh, we have no fear because you're with us, Lord. We thank you that you're all powerful. You are all powerful. We have no fear because you are with us. Oh, you are with us. You're all powerful, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We exalt your name. We glorify you, we glorify your name, you're my healer, you're my deliverer, you're my source, you're my peace, you're everything, yes you are. changed I'm not gonna be the same thank you Lord yes we exalt you we adore you Lord there is None like you, you are great. You do miracles so great. You're the miracle worker. You're the miracle worker. You're the Lord of the breakthrough. Lord of the breakthrough. you've anointed for me to do we're gonna see the breakthrough oh. mm. we exalt you your word Lord you
There is no one else like you. You are great. Oh, yes. You do miracles. So oh, great. There is no one else like you. There is no no fear, no intimidation. We're gonna be bold. Time for no fear, no fear, no fear. I will not be afraid. I will stand with boldness. God has marked us for this moment to push back the darkness. I'm gonna push back the darkness. Cause I am not afraid, I am bold, I'm courageous, oh yeah, we come against the spirit of fear, we come against the spirit of fear, we will be bold, we will be bold, say what you want us to say God, oh no fear, it's time for no fear in my life. Yes, we decree, God. Thank you, Lord. No fear. Amen. If you're in this place this morning and fear has been a stronghold in your life where that God has, you have stepped out on what God has said, but then there's been a point where you have just stopped because of the spirit of fear. And if that's you this morning, why don't you come on up and we're going to decree prophetically we're coming up as a physical prophetic declaration that fear stops today. Amen. And it doesn't rule our life. And we break it. It is a spirit. It is a demonic spirit. Because God wants us to be bold. We must be bold in this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone else? that you need fear broken off and you're making a commitment today, you're going to push beyond. Hallelujah. Push beyond that fear. We're breaking that today. Amen. Come on, let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. Oh, we bless the Lord. Oh, we bless the Lord. Oh, we bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. 
And that's a good thing to keep singing because fear is about to be broken over you forever. Fear, those of you who have been wrestling with it, is about to come screaming out of some people right now. Screaming. Because it has no more legal rights to you. You keep praising the Lord. We're going to pray for you. It's got no more legal rights. Evicted. It's an illegal host. It's an illegal presence. It doesn't belong anywhere near you. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Fear has a whole little army amongst itself that has been sent into this nation. It's a whole army. Demons can only be in one place at one time, unclean spirits, which means they need a whole army to do their work. They're not omnipresent, they're not omniscient, uh, omniscient they're not omnipotent. You know, you know this, this is what we have to do right this moment. This spirit of fear is being broken all down in this altar right now. But when Amanda said that about love, power, and a sound mind, that's the thing that has to be dealt with right now. I sense across this congregation and those watching is you need to put your hands on each side of your head like that as symbolic. And you're, you know, when you lay your anointed hands on your own head, then begin to say it right now. I call for a sound mind. God has given me a sound mind. My mind's not troubled. It's a sound mind. Sound mind, rise up in me. Sound mind, Sound mind. Settle, all settle all confusion. I command voices, I command voices. That, are not of God, that are not of God that are not of me, are not of me. To, be to be silent. I have a sound mind, a sound mind. In, the in the name above all names, above all names. The, name of Jesus. the name of Jesus. And now let's say what Ginger said. Just say it while your hands are on your head. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you said the blood, you just threw the whole Bible at the devil. You threw the whole word of God at him. Blood speaks for me. Remember, he has no blood. Blood speaks for me. So he has no mercy on blood, and he don't understand it. He just knows it is his defeat. Hallelujah. Oh, I like that. Play that. The blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. He washes white as snow.
for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood. sound different to you. Oh, no, that other key. Don't don't keep changing. Oh, the soul of Jesus. Oh, the soul of Jesus. How about that? what blood actually is in you it's liquid soul as a man thinketh so is he it runs your whole thought process through your whole being and so we're going to sing oh the soul of Jesus it brings me peace of mind that's what we're going to sing okay Beverly Lead us in that. Oh, the soul of Jesus, it brings me peace of mind. All right, go. Oh, the soul Come on. of Jesus. Oh, the soul of Jesus. Oh, the soul. Let this mind be you that was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, the soul of Jesus. Oh, the soul of Jesus. It brings me peace of mind. Victory the soul of Jesus. Well, you know, it's true. There's, There's victory, victory in the soul, in the soul of Jesus. There's victory in the soul of Jesus. And it brings me. It brings me peace of mind. Now say it like this. Say it. I'm at peace, peace, I am at peace, I have perfect peace of mind. I'm at peace, peace, oh perfect peace, he gives me peace of I'm at peace, peace. Come on, say it. Perfect peace, peace, peace of mind. I'm at peace, peace, perfect peace. He gives me peace of mind. Oh, he gives. Peace of mind. 
Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise. This, this has been an awesome service, huh? Well, sure it has. You know, these are the kind of services you, that when they pass into eternity, you can say, I was there. I was there when that happened. Hallelujah. Some of you, how many of you received something from the Lord today? Let me look at the hands in the house. Now, is that, is that not what church is about? Is that not what it's for? Hallelujah. Keep all of this in your thinking and all this on your mind so that when someone looks at you and they're hopeless in their eyes and they, they ask you something, they may be going down for the last time in their thoughts. There was somebody very famous one day came into Brother Copeland's meeting and he was up ministering. This was back, Cynthia, years back. And he came up on the platform, and if I told you the name, you'd know his name, but he came up there, and he came in the meeting, but he planned on doing himself in that night. And the Lord called on him that night and delivered him. But there was a word to deliver. And you have to have a word to deliver. Think about what comes out of your mouth next. You can't read a book sometime by looking at the cover of that book. And they may be going down for their last time. And they come up and just say hello to you. And you, and you can, if you listen to the Lord, however you answer back, could have been exactly what they needed to hear. Or it could be what pushes them on down. So keep this kind of service in mind. And know that the God that's in this room is the God that will be with you out there when you talk to somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't forget that, that healing is needed across the land. Does anybody remember that prophetic thing that I saw that time? Remember I said Biden was in one and there was nothing in the other one. And then I saw my staff go through the air and it went and sat down in one. And the Lord said, the prophets are holding Trump's place till he comes. And I want to tell you something. We see 2020 has to be fixed. It has to be fixed. And so start praying that direction. It must be fixed. Yes. Hallelujah. Because it's not fixed. <laughs> it's just not. Heaven, you know, there's still one real president Donald J. Trump and that's the one heaven recognizes oh people hate me about that kind of stuff <laughs> but you know the truth is never popular a lot of times you don't hate other people, but what's true is true. So we, it has to be fixed. Rights have to, wrongs have to be righted and so forth so that we can, we can grow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ever since the night, that pink-haired lady over there. <laughs> She's sitting right over there. You can get a shot of her. But, but ever since the, the night she slammed her hand down on the international tele, television, bam! It knocked me back against my seat of that car I was in. It was on at that point. I mean, 
Everything was on. You either fish or cut bait now from now on. You got to decide what you're going to do. You know, here in the South, there was a, <laughs> there was a, uh, something we used to do. Uh, we, we didn't, I'm not telling on me, but people around me, <laughs> people in, in the vicinity, they used to fish with dynamite here in the South. Garland in Louisiana wouldn't know anything about that. But, but they used to fish with dynamite. And what they do is they just, you know, there's a bunch of deacons in a Baptist church got drunk one time. And they went, they went out to the river. It's a true story. I'm not making this up. I know the people. And they got out there in the river fishing, dynamite. Well, that's not legal here, you know. And but they were a little bit, a little bit soused, you know, a little bit, a little bit flying a little bit. And they were throwing that dynamite out, but they didn't realize they were throwing it upstream, and it was floating back <laughs> on that boat. Mama, you remember that. And they, they're throwing it up there. And all of a sudden they noticed, oh my God, that dynamite's coming back this way. And they started trying to paddle it. <laughs> and it went off under that boat. Oh no. Up, oh, no. up in the air. Do you ask them what they did? They, one, they were still up in the air. They were paddling in midair. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God it didn't hurt them, but that happened. They got a lot of fish, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Didn't they? They caught a lot of fish or blew a lot up. But this guy was out in the fishing one day, and he was dynamiting. He just light a little stick of it and throw it overboard, and the fish will float up, you know. And he just picking them up, and the game warden pulled up beside him. And he said, hey, man, you can't do that. He never said a word. He just lit a stick of dynamite and threw it over in the game warden's boat. And he said, now you going to fish or talk? <laughs> now they're both guilty. So ever since Cat hit that table that night, um, it was on. And... Um, so we still have to start keep talking about Trump. Because right now he's the anointed president. Now in 2024, you have to remember that. Because he was anointed for eight years. So he's still anointed. This is why the man can draw 25, 30,000 people to every rally he has right now. And the other can only draw 300 with Bon Jovi and, and Cher and everybody else with him. I mean, in a parking lot. But, but Trump can hold five rallies a day and have 15, 20,000 25,000 per rally because he's anointed. He's the anointed president. But when that, he'll have to be anointed again in 24. 20 needs to be fixed. Hallelujah. So you pray that direction. Amen? Amen? We're going to have to pull Cat out another table and let her bang on it a little bit. You got to get some action going here. <laughs> some prophetic action. Amen. Robin, is Robin out here? Oh, did you come out here, honey? And, and Krista, oh, you're, you're waiting for the mic. Well, come on. No, you come on. It was so good to see all our friends here. Yes. Uh, Amanda Grace is here. Garland, Beverly, Bilbo, and 
all their precious family. You saw a ministry. Y'all can't go anywhere and say, oh, yeah, I need, to, I need to do this before you close. Um, Sister Beverly, if you'll come up here, and you'll, uh, you'll just go right down there with your family. Josh, you help her down, would you? Watch your hands. Uh-oh. <laughs> Blaze knows something's up. <laughs> if y'all will stand up right there where you are. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me earlier, and this is what he said to me concerning you. He said, now the time for you to be in the back is over, and you're now to come into the front, into the forefront of people's visions. And you're going to walk right on out into this now. And you go ahead and get ready for it. Because you're a family of ministry. And you're going to share in that ministry. But each one of you have a unique thing you're going to do. And the Lord's going to use it big. He's going to use it huge. And your best days are really yet ahead of you. For this is going to happen, says the Lord. And it's going to be in all kinds of ways. All kinds of ways from preaching, pastoring, prophesying, books, music. It makes no, it's going to come in all kinds of ways. All kinds of ways. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, now it's your family is coming out to center stage toward the front now. Hallelujah. Should you receive it, it is yours today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Well, aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> I told them, I said, there's probably people watching on live stream going, I knew I was supposed to go there this weekend. I knew it. You never know who's going to show up at Church International. Warrior, Alabama is a town of prophets. It is a prophet's town, and guess what? They show up. They show up. And so I couldn't miss this today. I just couldn't. And I would have kicked myself had I missed it. And uh, so it was so good to see all of you here and, and have you in the room with us. Thank you so much. If you're wondering what that praise was earlier, that was us trying to find a balance between South Africa, New York, Louisiana, and Alabama. <laughs> And we were trying to make up a praise team of all of those cultures. <laughs> but you know what? We figured it out. We made it work. Because <laughs> we all, no matter what culture we're from, we all serve the same person. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, Austin, will you come out here and close with me? So. So. So for the first time to all the congregation here and all of you watching, I wanted my husband to come and close with me today. We were married yesterday on July 8th, 2023, a day of new beginnings, which is why we got married on the 8th. And we got to have our dear friends with us this weekend. So see, God just loves a wedding, don't he, Miss Kat? He just does. Well, and thank you all for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Before we left on vacation, we had to be with all of you today. So we, like I said, I would have kicked myself and then kicked him. So, the, <laughs> But until next time, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Until next time, remember, we love you, Jesus loves you, and God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom. God bless you all.